Dr Keir Starmer, in 2019, Labour had their worst results since 1935. You've taken them now to a 20-point lead. You may well be Prime Minister in six weeks, but you did campaign for Jeremy Corbyn to be Prime Minister twice. You did support a second referendum. So what do you say to people who maybe voted for Brexit, who were scared of Jeremy Corbyn being Prime Minister now to convince them that they can trust you? We have changed this Labour Party. The Labour Party now is unrecognisable from the party of 2019. And I did that for a reason, because I thought that when we got rejected as badly as we did in 2019, you don't look to the voters and say, what on earth were you doing? You look to yourself, you look to your party, and we've changed this party fundamentally. Um, and now we are absolutely country first, party second, with a plan for the future of Britain to take us forward. We are a changed Labour Party, and that is absolutely fundamental to everything I've done over the last four and a half years since I've been leader of this party. Talking about the boat, something that GB News viewers are very exercised about. Um, Rwanda obviously not happening uh, before the next election, probably not happening at all. Um, you've talked about what Labour will do, but 15 European countries are now looking at third safe country for processing, not permanent deportation. Is that something that you would potentially look at? Because this isn't going to go away, is it? There's millions of people coming to, to Europe would love to live in the UK. Um, it's not going to be enough simply what you've announced so far, is it? We absolutely have to stop the boats. Um, there's no question about that. We shouldn't have anybody making that dangerous journey across the channel. And the government has lost control of the borders. Record numbers have come already this year under Sunak's leadership. So we've got to get to grips uh, with that. No country can lose control of its borders, um, and that will be a priority. I think that the first thing we need to do is to smash the gangs that are running the vile trade and putting people in boats in the first place. And I was chief prosecutor for five years. I worked on operations to take down terrorist gangs. I will never, ever accept that the only gangs we can't take down, apparently, are the vile gangs that are running this trade, putting people in boats across the water. But the government so say they're doing that already. What would you be doing? But if you read any report into the work that's being done to smash the, ga the gangs, um, you'll see there's gaps everywhere. What I want to do is bring together um, all of the, the National Crime Agency, the prosecutors, the police, MI5, to do the work together to analyse this with other countries and put in place an effective operation. That isn't happening at the moment. You can see it isn't happening by the numbers that are arriving. So that's where the priority ought to be. Now, so far as um, you know, whether people could be processed further upstream... Um, I think there are examples where that would work. Um, so we supported uh, what happened in Afghanistan. It's not working uh, well there. Um, same in Ukraine. It's not something that is fun different. That is fundamentally different to the government's gimmick of sending people, deporting people to uh, Rwanda. I don't think the Prime Minister ever thought that would work. That's what he thought at the first place. He caved into his party, spent £600 million, and now he's called an election before it can be tested. I think that's very, very telling of the Prime Minister and whether he really ever believed in this. If I was a taxpayer, um, to know that the Prime Minister spent £600 million pounds on a scheme he didn't ever believe in, I'd be pretty furious. You've talked about the National Service Plan that was announced yesterday as a teenage dad's army. Um, you've said that Labour would like to bring in votes for 16 and 17-year-olds that if they're paying tax, they should be able to vote. But I mean... Most 16-year-olds are sitting there GCSEs, they're living at home. There's not many of them going to be paying tax. Is it really justifiable? I mean, obviously, it's going to bring you more voters. Isn't that what this is about? No, I think that if you're 16 and 17, you can start a family, you can work, you have to pay your tax if you work. And I think you're entitled to have a say on who the government of the day is and who leads your country. But contrast that with the desperate idea that the Tories are flinging on the table of some sort of national service, which isn't thought through. All the military leaders who've got experience are saying it won't work. It'll take resource away from um, our military, our defence. That's the last thing we need. The government's already hollowed out uh, the army. It's smaller than since Napoleonic um, times. 
So, you know, in the end, and they're taking money from the Living Up Fund to do it. I mean, I think it's absolutely important in this election to focus on what is uppermost in in people's minds, which is the cost of living crisis and the NHS. And just finally, it's May Bank Holiday. Lots of people's holiday plans are in the bin. Um, Your family are going to be putting up with an awful lot. Will you take them away somewhere in the summer when this is all over? Well, hopefully, yes. And they do. I mean, uh, my family do have to put up with a lot. I think lots of families for politicians of all political parties um, have to put up with a lot. And we should always acknowledge that that isn't a party political. There are plenty of um, MPs, candidates from all parties who uh, will be having the same impact on their family. We owe them a huge amount. Sir Keith Thomas, thank you for talking to us on GB News today. Thank you. Thank you.